You're watching BBC News. We have just received a statement from Buckingham Palace confirming that the Duke of Edinburgh has died. The statement says, it is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. We have just received this information from Buckingham Palace. Let me repeat this news. It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. In recent years, uh, we know that the Duke was rarely seen in public. His last scheduled appearance was at Windsor Castle in July 2020, after which time he pretty much retired from public life. That had been his first official engagement in more than a year. And it came as Prince Philip handed over patronage of the rifles to Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. He had held the title of Colonel-in-Chief since 2007. But his connection to the infantry regiment stretched back to 1954. Four of its officers came to Windsor Castle to mark the occasion and to thank him for decades of service. We know, of course, that the Duke had uh, struggled with various health problems in recent times and had been in hospital for several weeks only a short time ago and Prince Charles on one occasion had visited him. He was in a private hospital to begin with and then received treatment in an NHS hospital before he returned home. But sadly we now learn of his death via that statement from Buckingham Palace just received in the last few minutes. The statement says it is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Well, the uh, Duke largely retired from his royal duties, as we know, in uh, August uh, 2017. He signed off at Buckingham Palace with the Royal Marines. He had been their Captain General for nearly 65 years. Prince Philip's own military career in the Royal Navy saw active service during the Second World War. But that uh, ended after his uh, wife's coronation in 1953. He dedicated himself to supporting the Queen in her work. The parade was the last of the Duke's 22,000 solo public engagements, a great support all those years to Her Majesty the Queen. Away from the military, he was president or patron of more than 750 organisations, many of them involved with the protection of the environment and the encouragement of sport. He was by far the longest serving consort to a monarch in British history. Let's just remind you of that statement released in the last few minutes from Buckingham Palace. It says, it is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. We are interrupting our normal programmes to bring you an important announcement. You're watching BBC News from London. A short while ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In a statement, the palace said, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The Royal Family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of the Duke of Edinburgh.
You're watching BBC News. A short while ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In a statement, the palace said, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme. Now, Prince Philip was the longest serving royal consort in British history. He was at the Queen's side for more than 70 years. He held a central role in British public life, loyally representing the Queen at home and abroad and supporting the monarch in all of her duties. The Duke had served in the Royal Navy before embracing royal duties full time when his wife became Queen in 1952. He was Her Majesty's closest advisor, responsible for modernising aspects of royal life, making the family more accessible and less formal in its ways. Philip led a remarkably active life, supporting hundreds of charities, campaigning for nature conservation, promoting leadership and encouraging young people to test their abilities in the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. During his long life, he maintained a close bond with the armed services, especially the Royal Navy, and encouraged his children and grandchildren to serve as he had done. Philip was known for his outspoken style and sometimes his controversial wit and could be relied upon to speak his mind, even on difficult issues. With Philip's death, the royal household has lost a dominant figure. Her Majesty has lost a husband and British public life has lost a powerful presence, a man whose momentous life spanned a century. Let's just remind you of the uh, statement that has been issued in the last few minutes from Buckingham Palace. It says, it is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell joins us now on the line. Nicholas, a long life now ended, devoted to service to the Queen and the country. Yes, a life of service alongside his wife, as you say. Uh, two months and one day short of what would have been his 100th birthday, a milestone that he was so determined to reach and for which the royal family would have gathered in celebration at Windsor Castle. Not a surprise, given his age, given the fact that uh, just over a month ago, of course, he was in hospital for, for a month, uh, uh, he underwent some uh, heart surgical procedure, uh, but he left hospital looking frail, but returning to Windsor Castle to spend these last weeks with his wife, the Queen. And this is a huge blow for her, as indeed it is for any spouse, leaving, losing uh, a, a partner uh, with whom they have been for more than 70 years, 73 years, a greater span of years than most of us have been uh, alive. So a huge blow for the Queen. And it is fair to say, I think, that in so many ways, the success and the stability of her reign owes a great deal to the success and the stability of their marriage. He was the person to whom she could always turn. The private support, which was so invaluable in the isolated position, the lonely position as head of state. It's a huge loss for the royal family. For so long, he was the dominant figure in the family's domestic life, an important source of advice and support for those who married into the royal family, as he did, uh, for William and Harry in their military careers, and for all that he was noted and will be remembered for his abrasiveness. There was also a much more sensitive side to his personality, and that uh, became apparent in the advice that he gave to younger members of the royal family, the advice that he attempted to give to Diana, Princess of Wales, when it was clear that her marriage uh, was, was failing. Uh, and there is a gap in our national life now. For so many 
years, he made a huge and significant contribution, not just to the success of uh, the Queen's reign, but in his own right. He had to find a niche for himself in the nation's life, and he did that. So a little colour has left the national stage today. He was much more than the rather gaff-prone, foot-in-the-mouth caricature, as he was so often presented. A man who made a contribution in his own right, but whose greatest contribution was in the support that he gave to his wife, the Queen. And let's just, uh, before we move on, Nicholas, stay with us if you would. I just would like to read again that statement that's been issued in the last few minutes from Buckingham Palace. It says, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. Nicholas Witchell, our royal correspondent, is uh, here. And as you say, a very long-serving consort, the longest serving that we've seen. Uh, but before he married the Queen, he had a very distinguished naval career, Nick. Yes, and there are those who feel that he could have risen to very senior rank within the Royal Navy. And, of course, it was one of the frustrations that he faced in the 1950s that he had to give up that naval career. I mean, he, this is a man who was naturally a dominant personality, a commander, uh, and yet he had to take the subservient role, if you like, uh, in second place behind the Queen. And he did undoubtedly find that difficult back in the 1950s. Uh, and he had to adapt. He had to find a role for himself. There was no constitutional significance. He was never prince consort. He was never uh, able to see uh, state papers or involve himself in that business, his, his wife, the queen's business. So that uh, added to the frustration that he felt in the 1950s. There was a young queen on the throne surrounded by experienced courtiers who were suspicious of this young husband who was something of a modernizer in royal terms, and he did then struggle a little with that. He found it difficult, but he found a role for himself. He could be contrary, he could be disputatious, and you have to remember that this was a man with a sharp mind, intellectually very curious, a sharp mind, and of course sometimes a sharp tongue. He could be abrasive and difficult, uh, but uh, it was through that, with this intellectual curiosity, that he developed areas of expertise and of curiosity, areas in which he uh, took a particular interest. He was one of the pioneers of the environmental movement, the first president of what was then the World Wildlife Fund. He set up the Duke of Edinburgh's award. That, perhaps, is the, 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 the one entity for which he will be most remembered, giving so many thousands of, indeed hundreds of thousands, of young people an opportunity to experience aspects of life that hitherto had been denied to them. He was a resilient personality, self-sufficient, uh, and that, of course, was rooted in the rootless childhood that he had. He came of royal blood from European royalty, uh, 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 and he was adaptable, and he called on all of those qualities to fashion a way, a route for himself through those difficult days in the 1950s finding a role for himself and settling into that role of support alongside the Queen. Yes, he once said that it was all rather trial and error of, uh, in that role to begin with, finding a way to support the Queen as her consort but, and having to devise his own ways of making a contribution to national life. And there were so many thousands of engagements, many of which, of course, we wouldn't have even have been aware of, but he had an extremely busy calendar before he retired. Yes, one of the busiest members of, of the royal family until his retirement from active royal duty in 2017 at the age of uh, 94 or 95 then. And it was. It was a life, uh, an adult life of service and of duty and of support for the Queen. He made, I think it is reasonable to say, an incalculable contribution to the success of her reign. People who know them both say that she simply could not have done it without him, without this constant 
source of support to the Queen. Much of it, much of it, private support, never witnessed, never seen by the world. But he was the person to whom she could always turn and on whom she could always rely. And that has now gone. Now, it is important to say that there can be no question of the Queen now withdrawing or retiring. She will continue with her role as the UK's head of state. But it is a great loss to her, a moment of of, of great sadness for the Queen to lose her husband of 73 years, uh, the man who has been, as you say, the longest serving consort in British history. Nick, for the moment, thank you very much, but do stay uh, with us. Let's remind you of the statement that the palace has issued today. It says, it is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Further announcements will be made in due course. The royal family join with people around the world in mourning his loss. Camilla Tomini is the former royal editor of the Sunday Express and she is the current associate editor of the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Camilla, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, during those uh, 13 years or so that you were the royal editor at the Sunday Express, you travelled many, many times with the Duke of Edinburgh. What are some of the memories that stand out for you? Um, good afternoon. and I'm sorry to be here on this sad occasion. Um, yes, I'm I mean, I have fond memories of covering the Duke of Edinburgh's jobs. I travelled to America with him and the Queen back in 2007. They met George W. Bush. Most recently, their last foreign visit was to Berlin, and he was on sparkling form. That was, I believe, in 2015. Um, there was a walkabout in the main city centre, and he was laughing and joking with some medical students um, about the fact that he didn't believe in seeing doctors, always very stoical. And we know that he uh, would have preferred to have been at home and that one month hospital spell where he did undergo surgery on his heart obviously a significant step in ensuring that he could be back home um, for this moment but even when he was convened back to Windsor Castle um, in a car and not an ambulance he was waving to staff who were welcoming him there a very popular figure behind palace gates famed for the fact that he had a very small turnover of staff. In fact, some employees had been working for him literally for decades. And um, I reflect as well on what Nick has so eloquently said there of his stalwart support of the Queen. We can't really think of the Queen's reign over the course of nearly 70 years without imagining Philip a couple of steps behind her. And it was like that on jobs. You know, he would almost act as the warm up man and put people at ease. I know a lot was said about some of his gaffes over the years, but when I observed him at close quarters, he would make a little joke with people just to settle their nerves because when people meet, the Queen, they can be sometimes like rabbits in headlights. So he'd make the odd quip and um, make sure everyone was quite relaxed. Also, as Nick said there, not someone who really likes small talk. If he was going to say something, he would say something challenging or ask an interesting question because he didn't just want to do pleasantries. He was always very well briefed before engagements and wanted to interact and engage with the people that both he and the Queen met. Um, I'm sure right Cam now... Camilla, I, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I need to go to Downing Street to hear the Prime Minister. It was with great sadness that a short time ago I received word from Buckingham Palace that His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh has passed away at the age of 99. Prince Philip earned the affection of generations here in the United Kingdom, across the Commonwealth and around the world. He was the longest serving consort in history, one of the last surviving people in this country to have served in the Second World War, at Cape Matapan, where he was mentioned in dispatches for bravery, and in the invasion of Sicily, where he saved his ship by his quick thinking. And from that conflict, he took an ethic of service that he applied throughout the unprecedented changes of the post-war era. Like the expert carriage driver that he was, he helped to steer the royal family and the monarchy so that it remains an institution indisputably vital to the balance and happiness of our national life. He was an environmentalist and a champion of the national world, natural world, long before it was fashionable. 
With his Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, he shaped and inspired the lives of countless young people. And at literally tens of thousands of events, he fostered their hopes and encouraged their ambitions. We remember the Duke for all of this, and above all, for his steadfast support for Her Majesty the Queen. Not just as her consort, by her side every day of her reign, but as her husband, her strength and stay of more than 70 years. And it is to Her Majesty and her family that our nation's thoughts must turn today, because they have lost not just a much loved and highly respected public figure, but a devoted husband and a proud and loving father, grandfather, and in recent years, great-grandfather. Speaking on their golden wedding anniversary, Her Majesty said that our country owed her husband a greater debt than he would ever claim or we shall ever know. And I'm sure that estimate is correct. So we mourn today with Her Majesty the Queen. We offer our condolences to her and to all her family. And we give thanks as a nation and a kingdom for the extraordinary life and work of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. A statement and a tribute from the Prime Minister Boris Johnson outside number 10 Downing Street. Let's just momentarily go to Buckingham Palace uh, where the official notification has been placed upon the gates outside the palace with the statement on it that was released by Buckingham Palace just a short time ago. Let's remind you of what it says. It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Well, the leader of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, has released a statement. And in it, he says, the United Kingdom has lost an extraordinary public servant in Prince Philip. My thoughts are with the Queen, the Royal Family, and the British people as our nation comes together to mourn. Let's uh, just take you to Buckingham Palace and uh, see that notice, if we can, of uh, the notification that has been placed upon the gates. I hope uh, we might be able to show that to you in just a moment. These, this is the notification that's been placed outside Holyrood in Edinburgh. As you can see, it says that further announcements will be made in due course. Let's return to Camilla Tomini, a former royal editor for the Sunday Express, now associate editor of the Daily Telegraph, and the Prime Minister there expressing great sadness and condolences for the Queen, acknowledging the extraordinary public duty that Prince Philip did alongside the Queen, never outshining her.